her southpaw against a conventional fighter. Patello, a very tall fighter for his weight. They're actually Patello. both relatively tall for the weight. Patello is tall, but he hunches down like a smaller guy. Some guys just don't know how to use an advantage. He gets low. But the reach will always be there if he takes advantage of it. Lopez stepping in with the straight right hand. You can expect him to fight by the book against a southpaw. Straight right hand, left hook, probably dispensing for the most part with the jab, although he fires one there and there. Maybe I'm wrong. First mistake you make when you're fighting a champion is to move away. Because? Go, you want to go and take his title from him in the first few rounds anyway. The way the judges are noticing that you are, you want it. So you're saying Patello ought to be the aggressor here. Should be the aggressor for the first three or four rounds. Otherwise, the champ is the champ is the champ. Well, he's trying to be the aggressor, but uh, getting to Lopez is like uh, trying to pick up uh, a plate of pasta, you know, with chopsticks. And if you start reaching, Lopez will step around you and find you. There you are. Straight left hand up the fight by Patello. Lopez fires left hook in straight right hand. You know, we've, we've seen fighters in their mid-30s, but at this low weight, uh, it's very, very unusual where quickness counts for so much that a 35-year-old fighter would still be a world-class fighter. Straight right hand lands on the chin for Ricardo Lopez, then he moves to another position, fires another straight right hand. Patello getting low. Wants to come in low and shoot at Lopez. Lopez picking him off for the moment as he comes in. Our crack research team, incidentally, reminds me that the Korean fighter who gave such a good account of himself uh, against Eric Morales was Injun Chi. Nice recall. First time Patello gets to Lopez's body, ducks the right hand and fires his own left as round one. Raise your hand. Hold it there. Hold it there. Incidentally, uh, this fight, which was expected to be, I don't mean this fight, I mean the big fight, of course, between Trinidad and Hopkins, was expected to be a sellout originally, uh, but a number of tickets. Upwards of 1,500. Good left hook by Lopez. His corner asked Three, him for more four, left hooks. He perfectly five, countered Patello six, as Patello began seven, to launch a right hand shot. Eight, come on, Jimmy. To be continued. Let's go. Go. And Patello was definitely wobbled by that hook. Now Lopez lands a double left hook shot. This may be Patello's chance now to make him mix it up. It's too elusive early on. Patello, not only was knocked down, but he now has a cut on the corner of his right eye. Right, right. Step back. He brought a big scar into the ring in that area just outside the right eye, and now the scar tissue is the area where the cut has been opened. That'll happen sometime. Keep him up. Lopez pointing to his cuff to let Arthur McCanty Sr. know that he felt he got hit below the belt. McCanty says to Patello, keep him up. Patello trying to take advantage and attack just now as Lopez is coming in, exactly the way George Foreman suggested that he would. Sometimes that you have to get up off the canvas to understand that you're in a fight and you've got to fight for a title match and no one is going to give you anything. There was a little grin on Patello's face as he got up off the canvas that seemed to say, you know, 
he is a master, and he picked me clean on that one. Now Patello is starting to come on like waves. You miss him, he hits you, he keeps coming in. Sometimes below the belt, though. Yeah, he's flirting with the low blow penalty because since Mercanti warned him to keep him up, he's landed two more below the belt. But neither was a very hard shot. Lopez Patello landing a left as Lopez backs him up with another left of his own. And then most importantly, Lopez is going to the body. Digging in those left hooks to the body. A very professional thing to do. That's what you want to do. You're in with this young guy. He's, keep, he's coming and coming. Hit him in his body. Make him stop. Him up, Take some of the energy up, away. Lopez using deft head movement there Go to stay away from Patello's morning. shots. Go. Fighters listen to Mercanti and then set again. If he should get penalized, this could be a three-point round for Lopez. So he has to be careful. Take the loss for the round and move on. Lopez wasted no energy trying for a finish that wasn't there. Yeah. Come on, I'm talking about. Okay. Hold it, babe. Hold it. Okay. Now you know. I told you. You throw the left hook and the upper. Then then you're gonna get him. You got that? Master craftsman coming back with a perfect left hook after firing a right that was a little short. See how Patello was allowing his right hand to kind of wander slowly out? Lopez took perfect advantage. Patello has got those lean, lean legs like the old Sandy Settler. And uh, we uh, delivered a brief eulogy for Sandy Sadler a week ago, but uh, you're the one who knew him well, George. They are a wonderful guy. Tough and mean, but would give you a kiss <laughs> embarrassingly sometimes. He loved you. If he loved you, he loved you all the way. Uh, continue uh, the story I was telling in the last round. As Lopez lands a straight right, about 1,500 where more tickets were returned after the postponement of the fight two weeks ago. Many people unable to travel here were unwilling. And there are some small patches of empty seats we see around. But on the other hand, there are rows at the very top of the arena that are full. So uh, obviously, uh, there's probably a walk-up sale and a fair number of the cheap seats have been sold. I should say cheaper seats. Lopez has already gotten the respect of Patello. That's what you don't want to respect the champion. You want to just keep driving, 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 driving. Another low blow for Patello. Landed on the cup. Again, it wasn't a big shot. Mercanti watches. Quick comment on 81-year-old uh, Arthur McCanty Sr. and his legacy as a referee, George. Still walking around like a cat. He refereed a bout for me in 1969 with Boone Curtin. I pushed him down, he penalized and took the round from me, so I had to win the second round by knockout. Same thing with Joe Frazier. <laughs> he was there also, so this guy's been in a lot of championships. And a regular boxing man. You know what I've always loved about him? He's an old-style courtly gentleman. Hello, yes sir, no sir, thank you very much, sir. Very appreciative of anything you give him. He's great. Mr. Boxing. Now there's blood between the eyebrows of Ricardo Lopez, and it looks as though there may have been a meeting of heads, as Lopez seems to have one of those big cuts that can come from the skull-to-skull -skull contact. He's got a guy in Patella who's going to keep coming, keep coming. He closes his eyes when he throws to the body. That's why a lot of those punches are going low. Doesn't seem to look. Stop! 
That's the second time I've told you with the head, right? Box. Okay, so two warnings for the head, as well as at least one warning for low blows. I wouldn't allow a guy to give a speech like that to my father. Uh, I agree with you, George. I don't get that. I mean, uh, he's here to do a fight, not deliver a lecture on what this fight means in the infinite scheme of things. New York will it's always be the big apple. At it's the end of the day, it's a prize fight. And whatever happens, happens. If he's delivering a message to Bernard Hopkins that if you start roughhousing, I'm going to... I'm going to penalize you or, or uh, disqualify you. I don't think that's a good thing to do no. before a fight with any fighter. Not at all. You have those in the fighter meetings with the manager, and then give the fighters the instructions and leave it alone. Harold, how do you have this scored through three? <laughs> okay, Jim. I got a three to nothing, 30 to 26 for Carlo Benito Lopez. Jim, it seems to me that, you know, he deserves an extra point for the knockout of round two, but it seems to me that he's just controlling you with the sharper, harder shots. Solani Patello's moving in, trying and whatnot, but as he moves in, he's getting nailed by sharp right hands and good left hooks. Finita, a real master. I mean, he just times it perfectly. And, you know, perfect timing, uh, Harold, just as you mentioned it. Patello was moving in and got nailed by a straight right. Up the middle. He landed a good right himself, Patello. Right, right. A lot Don't of those rights right. he throwed don't have a lot of power to them, but they keep tapping them in the right spot. Lopez get caught in the right spot, right between the eyes. Vitello going to the body with the left hand. Lopez trying to pick his, pick his spots carefully and stay out of harm's way. Already, Lopez fighting slightly more cautiously since the blood has appeared between his eyebrows. Vitello is coming, coming, coming and seemingly getting stronger as the fight goes on. That's what you want to do with an old champion. Just keep coming, stay right in front of him, keep the fight going. Don't allow him to have one second out of the fight. Straight right hand by Lopez, busts Patello in the chops. And a quick left hand inside by, by Lopez. You understand? Okay, let's go, Box. Final warning from McCanty who says he's going to take a point if Patello again hits below the belt. That's the second he, warning. He helped Patello that time, Patello was shaking. Yeah, after, uh, after the two clean shots by Lopez. Good straight right hand. Lopez putting a little more mustard on his shots now in the fourth round. You get the sense that Lopez feels like Patello's getting stronger, so it's time for him to step it up as well. Patello reaches up again. Yep. Caps him over and over, right between the eyes. And Lopez with the straight. He gives him uh, hit backs. Hit backs. Yeah. It's pretty amazing that Lopez has been fighting at this weight or near this weight for 16 years. Uh, perhaps it can be attributed to the fact that he attended military school for six years. I've never heard of a fighter who went to military school before. And Patello appears to have injured an, an ankle or a foot. He began to limp away from the point of contact. Now Patello is forced to go back in and engage as Mercanti says, let's go, but I'm not sure what happened. It looked like he hurt his leg, George. Yeah, it like it hurt his shoulder, if you ask me. You think so? Surely we'll find out at some point along the way. I thought I saw him limping a little bit on one leg. Whatever he hurt, he's not thinking about it now as he keeps stalking and tries to come back in on Lopez. I think he hurt the right shoulder. He doesn't seem to be throwing that side with much authority. Sometimes you'll hurt it and it'll just stop, right? Just like it came to go. Both of you keep him up. Lopez bodies him off, looks for one more clean shot, then steps away. Left hook Lopez, right hand up the pipe. 
Blood starts to trickle again from outside. Patello's right up. Patello seems to be a great plotter. Doesn't execute any real power. At some point, you've got to hit, load up, and hit this guy and make him hurt. Quick left hook inside by Lopez. Right hand it hook up, inside Ricardo. by Patello. Canty again yelling for Patello to keep him up. Well, this time he was talking to Lopez. Oh, okay. Thus, thus the absence of a penalty. And there's a good straight right hand by Ricardo. Patello keeps coming, plotting, plotting. As round five comes to a close, we're going to take you to Brian Burwell for a developing story just outside Tito Trinidad's locker room. Brian. Thank you. This week, uh, I commented that they hadn't been uh, cooperative with the media and they went to great lengths to let us know, well, the reason that they hadn't cooperated last week on our telecast was that they were busy uh, going to hospitals and such in the wake of the disaster, and they had a logistical problem, and uh, we wanted to go on record with that. But they are very touchy and sensitive about a lot of things, and this is another more serious example. Not to mention that the New York State Athletic Commission has been under siege from local media in New York for the entire summer. Um, criticisms about uh, how fights are officiated, how fights are staffed, how fights are refereed, etc., etc. And uh, the, the commission's chairman, Mel Southard, is outgoing after this fight. So you wonder about the strength and the leverage of the New York State Athletic Commission as they try to adjudicate the situation in Trinidad's locker room right now. Yeah, you know, we had a death in the ring in New York early this summer. Give him up. Give we him had up. a dispute, uh, a serious dispute in which a decision was uh, changed involving the Hector Camacho Jr. fight. The commission has been under fire. And I have to ask you something, George. Hey, do you think seriously that he wouldn't fight tonight if he has to rewrap his hands? If he's as sensitive as you said he is. I mean, I mean, they would what? What would they do to him? I mean, would they have to strip him? I mean, they, all these people have come. They've bought tickets. Huge amounts of money have been spent here. Meanwhile, Ricardo Lopez's more accurate punching is beginning to take a tremendous toll on Zelani Patello. And now Lopez seems to sense that he has a chance to finish Patello right here in round six as he backs the South African fighter into a corner and bangs away with both hands. And now Patello shows his guts and courage as he fights his way out of the corner and backs Lopez up himself. Cut the elbow, stop it up. What we're seeing. Patello has got to cut over his right eye. Big one. That's going to make a big difference. Uh, and we're seeing that Lopez is not just a master craftsman. He's a fighter. Oh, that's, what you got, that's what you got to make these fighters do like that. These champions have the title for a while. Make them fight. Don't allow them to just sit and box. You got to make them fight. Hit them all the time. If you follow CompuBox numbers, the really great craftsmen in most instances will come up with a round or two that shows you how incredibly accurate they can be in the heat of battle. And in the last round, by CompuBox numbers, Lopez landed 39 out of 60 punches for a 65% connect rate. But right now, both fighters are bloodied. Both fighters are banging away. And we've got, as Larry Merchant said, a real fight, not a boxing match, in the center of the ring. Patello is making him extend himself. After going for a knockout, he needs some oxygen. you got to stay right on him. Lopez is needing some oxygen just to recover from that near knockdown. The big assault that he put forward on Patello.
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Potelo, it looks like Potelo's uh, as far as uh, Potelo's camp is concerned. Uh, uh, Lopez is tired, and now they say that uh, Petelo must actually keep the momentum. For the second round, for the second fight in the row, we have both fighters with eye cuts. We have some serious exchanges going on. Is this a harbinger of things to come? Round seven begins. Harold Vladimir, how do you have it scored through six? Okay, Jim. I still got it a shout out. Six to nothing, 60 to 53, Ricardo Benito Lopez. Because, you know, even though Zelani Patel has been aggressive, active, throws a lot of punches, he's still getting hit by the real good shots by Ricardo Lopez. Then he's the clean a lot of punches and getting them all busted up. So I think Benito's put to the shout out so far. But we were watching those tight shots between rounds, George Foreman, and now both fighters have two cuts. Two cuts. Patello is coming on, bringing the fight to him. The only way he's got, he's going to win this thing is to keep it up. Bringing it to the, the more seasoned champion. Make him throw body shots. Make, you got to make Lopez do everything in the book so that he can lose all the oxygen tonight. Patello trying to make his youth and courage the deciding factors down the stretch against Ricardo Lopez's brilliant technicianship. Youth and courage. Also, he has this hunger. Long way from home, you didn't come this far just to let the champion beat you because he's champion. He's already seen a fighter come all the way from Thailand to beat an American star from Albuquerque, New Mexico here in the Garden tonight. Straight right hand by Lopez, lands flush. Tello's part, if he can't be accurate, he'll be busy. He threw 88 shots in round six, and he's headed toward another big number here in round seven. He's trying to keep the pressure on Lopez. That's what you gotta do. Don't allow the veteran to think. Don't allow him to get his feet in position. Make him always have to put one foot in the wrong position, then back out into another position. Hit him with something. Doesn't have to be the on the button, just hit him with something. Lopez targeting straight right hand after straight right hand up the middle against Patello. Patello going down to the body, up with the left hand to the head, back to the body again, trying to mix it up. Straight right hand lands for Patello as Lopez was leaning in. Lopez should have gone for the knockout a little earlier. He's had this kid hurt a few times and he just keeps letting him off the hook. Seems to be content getting him hurt. Let's go. After firing 88 punches in round six, Zolani Patello came back to throw 85 in round seven. But Ricardo Lopez, by CompuBox numbers, outlanded him, landing 24 out of 56. So Lopez continues to go for precision and high percentages, and Patello just keeps trying to crank the pressure up. Patello's trainer uh, trying to keep him going, telling him that Lopez uh, looked finished, but he sure seems like a very lively corpse at this point. Patello had the momentum, and he gave it up. Once you started, you got to finish it. Well, maybe he got tired in the process go, of trying to Box. beat Lopez down. Patello learning what many Ricardo Lopez opponents have learned. That he may not 
look super strong in there, but he has balance, leverage, timing, technique, precision, and the mental capacity to stay the course. That's why he's 49-0-1 in 50 fights. And Patello goes down as much from exhaustion as from Lopez's left hook. Five, six, seven, eight, he doesn't nine, want anymore. He does not want a long anymore. month in New York. A long way from home for the South African fighter. And Ricardo Lopez has the 50th victory of his career. When they put the mouthpiece out, they don't want any more. And you can tell just by the way he sat down. Enough. The language is, <laughs> see, I don't have a mouthpiece. Don't ask me any questions. You see my mouthpiece. <laughs> Lopez closed the show, landing 10 of 17 okay. power. Has come to a close as Zolani Patello is the last fighter to look at Mercanti and say, I've had enough. Mercanti. And how fitting that the last arm Mercanti will ever raise in victory is that of the graceful old warrior, Ricardo Lopez. But he moved around like a cat, Mercanti did. He had no indication that he was finished. So a dejected Zelani Patello prepares to go back to Port Elizabeth, South Africa, and Jimmy Lennon Jr. prepares to put the capper on this one with the official results. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 1 minute 32 seconds. In round <laughs> number 8, our referee in charge, Arthur Mercanti, reaches the count of 10. The winner by way of knockout, still undefeated, and still the IBF Junior Flyweight Champion of the World, Ricardo Finito Lopez.